don't forget this concept. Land for peace will not help. They don't want Gaza. They don't want the West Bank. They never said that they want the West Bank and Gaza. All along, they have said that they want the entirety of it. So unless you also, in supporting them, unless you also want to destroy the entire nation of Israel, you can forget about the idea of giving land for peace. You can forget about the idea of the Jewish people giving them a little more land in order to gain peace. It's not going to work unless that's what the Palestinians themselves also want, but it's not. You might be able to find one or two Palestinians here or there who like this idea of just having the West Bank to themselves. You are a fool and extremely uninformed if you think that this is what the establishment of the Palestinian people want. A simple way to prove this. Don't take my word for it. Simple way to prove this. Look up pretty much any of the mainstream Palestinian organizations on the internet. Look them up and look at their emblem, their symbol, their motto, their logo. In all of these logos, you're not going to see the shape of the map of the West Bank, Judea, which is the heartland of the Jewish people. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see the shape of Gaza. You're going to see that you're going to see the shape of the entirety of the land of Israel. They consistently put this in all their logos and all their emblems. That is what they want, and they don't hide it. They don't hide it. That is why they have rejected all of the many proposals that Israel has made as offers of peace to them. Land for peace. They've rejected all of these. Go ahead. So one, uh, one, yeah, one. The question is like, um, um, you know, uh, you should have some authenticity or some tangible evidence or something you want to claim your land you know instead of killing the people and chasing them out you know what this is our authentic records or these are our evidences that we have this land belongs to us so in what is the base that they're claiming it is their land the the strongest evidence that they have for this being their land is basically that the majority of the people who call themselves Palestinians currently are truly descendants of people who lived uh, in what was called the British Mandate of Palestine before the State of Israel was reestablished in 1948. So it is true that the majority of the people who call themselves Palestinians, they were they truly were, it's a fact, they were residents who lived in the area of land that was called the British Mandate of Palestine. Okay. However, they are not all of those who are residents. A large percentage of the Jewish population of the state of Israel are also descendants of people who lived in Palestine and were also called Palestinians at that time. No, who named them Palestines? Okay, so that's what I'm getting at. I mean, that's what I'm getting at. And, and there are multiple layers to There are layers to this. Now, their current claim, the strongest evidences that they give for, for claiming land there is that they lived there before the state of Israel existed. That's true. But most of the Jewish citizens of the new state of Israel also lived there before the state of Israel existed. And they were also called Palestinians. The Jewish civilians there were also called Palestinians. By the same definition, the same definition as people who lived there two years before the state of Israel was established. So you could say that Israel is a Palestinian state if you're using it in the geographic sense. You could also say that Jordan is a Palestinian state because the state of Jordan was formed out of roughly 75% of the British mandate of Palestine. The state of Jordan, the country of Jordan, was created out of about 75, 75%. That was the first land for peace swap with the local Arabs in Palestine. Hmm. So Gaza, their land in Gaza, their land in the West Bank, these would not be the first Palestinian state given for peace. Jordan was the first, and it didn't work. Then we got Israel. All right. And that's not working for them. You got to be a fool. All right. So the 
British Mandate of Palestine is the name that the mainly the European nations gave to the area that at that time what was called the League of Nations. It's kind of like a a precursor to what is now known as the United Nations, right? It's a coalition of many different countries that work together to agree upon certain policies for international relations, for relationships between different countries. So after World War I, the Ottoman Empire, which was an Islamic empire, that was vast, it was huge, and it had lasted, I don't remember the exact amount of years, but roughly a thousand years it had lasted. This empire included all of the land of Israel, and it basically stretched practically to practically to India, you know, <laughs> nearly. Yes. Um, and it included parts of North Africa. It was huge. This was not a country. This was an empire, a, co a, a colonial empire, a colon. It was a foreign occupation in the land of Israel, an Islamic occupation. When the Western powers succeeded at dismantling the Ottoman Empire, this Islamic Empire, at the end of World War I, you were left with vast stretches of land that had no government. And in these lands, there was no, there, there, were, there was no organized sense of a nation for the most part in most of these lands, okay? There were certain ethnic groups that were indigenous, local to some of these places, but they did not have any actual governance and most importantly, the non-Jews who lived in the land of Israel at that time, they didn't. They had never had their own country and had never had their own national identity either up to that point at the end of World War I. So the Europe, mostly the European nations, but it's the League of Nations, they divided up all this land in the Middle East into major divisions. So they created a division that they called the mandate for Palestine, all right? And when they used this term Palestine, they meant it in a geographic sense. They did not name it after any ethnic group. There was no ethnic group that was uniquely called Palestinian. Anyone who lived there was called Palestinian. All the Jews who lived there, who many of modern day Israeli Jews are descendants from, they were also called Palestinians. So again, this was not a national term. It's sort of like how you would call um, any any kind of animal that you might discover in South America. If you find a new animal or plant in South America, you might call it the South American lotus or the South American peacock, for example, right? It doesn't mean that this term South America is the name of a certain country. It's the name for a region. That's how the term Palestine was used at that time, right? But what I really don't, what I really want people to note here is that this modern usage of the term Palestinian that is now uh, appropriated and misused by the Palestinian Islamic terrorist groups, this term was popularized in modern times by foreign powers, by foreign countries, particularly Western European foreign countries. So it's really rich. It's really funny. It's really pathetic and deceptive to use this term that non-locals enforced upon us in the land of Israel. They called us Palestinians. And then th those who hate Israel who live in this land then adopt this and start trying to claim that there was a Palestinian country because you had the British Mandate of Palestine. Well, the British Mandate of Palestine was not a local country. This was a foreign government in the land of Israel. It was foreign. They weren't even Arab. It wasn't even an Arab government. It wasn't a Muslim government. They adopted this term Palestinian from a Anglican Christian Western European power. So it's, it's what's called an exonym. It's a name given to them by foreign powers. And of course, the, the, uh, the Europeans are used to calling the land of Israel Palestine because they inherited this from the, basically from the Roman Empire, which had inherited it uh, from, well, they didn't exactly inherit it. The Roman Empire used it as a way to refer to the region without needing to acknowledge the Jewish people's presence there. So there's, they're not connected to the well, Philistines? There's more that I can add 
there's a, a good bit more than I could add, but I want to go ahead and give you a break. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, yeah, I just wanted to take, um, ask you a question. Like, these Palestinians are not connected with the Philistines? Not in any significant way. And the only thing I would say that they have in common with uh, the Philistines of the Bible is that this term does derive from that term, which, by the way, means in Semitic language in Hebrew. It means invaders. So it's not a name to be proud of. From its inception, from its beginning, the term Philistine or Palestine, Palestine, from the beginning, it has been the name of foreign occupation. It has been the name of foreign invasion from the beginning. 